Good morning. In module two, we're working on informational interviews. So I wanted to put together this quick presentation audio uh, file for you um, to talk a little bit more in detail about what you should look for as you're doing your informational interviews. Um, first, a personal testimonial. I am a big believer in informational interviews. I actually got my first two jobs in higher education through doing informational interviews which I think not a lot of people realize or think about, um, that sometimes there's an open position, there's a failed search, and if you talk to people and uh, you know network, you really can walk into a job. Um, I was meeting with a career counselor at University of Richmond where I was getting my master's degree, didn't know what I was gonna do after I finished, and she said, you know, you should really talk to someone at the admissions office. I did, and they um, actually invited me to come and interview for a position as an admissions counselor there. Um, and then when I was ready to leave that job, I was moving to Boone, North Carolina with my partner. So I had a fairly good idea of what um, potential employers would be in the area, um, what, you know, I was looking at community colleges and then at Appalachian State and just made a list of everyone who might be willing to talk to me um, in the field. And that's how I ended up getting a job at Appalachian State University. Which isn't to say that you should go into an informational interview expecting to get a job at all, but I just think it's, it's a very, very powerful tool that oftentimes um, people are unaware of when they think about their job search or just learning about their career. And I also keep in mind that I want to pay it forward. And so anytime anyone wants to talk to me about my job, I'm happy to do so. And I think a lot of people, even if they don't know you, would be happy to talk to you about their job. If they like what they do, they want to share it. Um, so when you are going into these informational interviews, you would, should always have a goal in mind. Um, obviously, when I was trying to find a job in Boone, North Carolina, my goal was like, I need to find a job and I need it to be in this particular geographic area. So I was very explicit and honest with people that I talked to that that was what my goal was so that they could help me um, figure out what might be good opportunities or possibilities. For this class, you're probably not looking for a job right away, but you should have an idea of what you are looking for, um, whether you're trying to find out if a specific administrative capacity would be a good fit for you, or if you're interested in a research question, um, or if you're just increasing your knowledge of the field for the future. Um, honestly, if you're just trying to meet the, the requirements of the assignment, you can tell your, um, your person that you're talking to that, um, but tell them what your goal is and try to be honest with yourself and them so that they can help you. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, if you are trying to increase your knowledge of the field uh, for research or um, for, for future use, it's good to have an idea of what the challenges are within the field. Um, there's a great book by Peter and Marcia Mangola, who are wonderful researchers in student affairs, and they call, um, they call it contested issues. So every administrative capacity is going to have some contested issues or challenges that professionals encounter. And it's good to ask about that um, because that can really give you insight into what people are dealing with day to day and um, what the best and the worst parts of their job are. So um, try to do enough research ahead of time that you kind of know what some of those issues are within the field. And then also ask, ask your interviewee what they think of um, and what their challenges are. A lot of challenges often are related to change. And so things like new technology, resources, trends um, can be really good areas to ask about in general. You want to try to get an idea of what the values and ethos of the profession are um, so that you can, of course, see if it might be a good fit for you, 
but also so that when you're working someday within higher education, you know where the person, the other people that your um, colleagues, where they're coming from and what they're dealing with day to day. So for example, I no longer work in admissions, but it's really helpful for me to know what the values of the admissions team are and what are some of the challenges that they're dealing with. Um, some questions to consider asking along those lines. Um, make sure that you're showing off what you already know and, and the research that you've done. So don't ask them things that you know the answer to. Um, ask what they ask interviewees for, for entry-level jobs in the field. I think that's a very revealing question. Ask them what steps they would suggest that you take next and who else to speak with. Um, I think the article that's posted for module two shares some good ideas for how to use this as a stepping stone to increase your network and um, to help you with your career exploration and down the line, your job search in higher education. So I hope that's a helpful quick overview. Um, if you are struggling with who to talk to or what questions to ask, know that I'm here to help and I look forward to reading about what you learn. Okay.